and level four. So that's where we're at right now is level four, which is all about relationships. So the lesson here is health, the lesson here is wealth, the lesson here is happiness, here's relationship, and here's spiritual connection. So we're gonna go through all those. We're gonna get we're gonna get all the lessons as we go through this journey. So right now we're moving into relationships. So uh, remember what our compass is, our North Star, how we keep going, how we transcend in the transit of each of these levels is by taking responsibility for each aspect of it. Taking responsibility for our health, like what uh, Christine was talking about earlier. She finally took responsibility for her health. Before she like, thinks that she's like, she doesn't, she, it, it was like just this problem that she was trying to get all these, you know, uh, it's what she was told was the way to do it, but it was still, it's false idols. There's nothing out there that has the power. And we're going to go to health, uh, I think, either tomorrow, I think it might be tomorrow morning, I think we're doing health. My mom, by the way, she was on hospice, and uh, given less than a month to live, that was about eight years ago. Obviously, she's not dead, she's not just surviving, she's thriving, so we're going to share with you how she did that, uh, and you'll be able to find that inside yourself, and, uh, but uh, it is... The point is, it's about taking responsibility for each aspect of your life, uh, your health, your wealth, your happiness, relationships, spiritual connection. So, right now, we're about to take responsibility for our relationships. So, on the count of three, you all ready to shout it out? Yeah. Here we go. One, two, three. I'm responsible for my relationships. That feels good to hear you say that. That feels good to hear you say that. It's so free. And she's a, uh, she also like, I thought. I'm responsible. So what, when, when you're living inside of an old world relationship, you're just like, it's your fault. You're like, you're always blaming me for everything. They're like, you're blaming me for everything. Right away. And nobody's taking responsibility for anything. What's cool now, so when I met Mel, she was, uh, she was living, you know, the, she had burnt the blueprint, but she was still didn't know who she was. She still thought what people would love would be this mask of this, you know, nice, sweet person. And so, why she was still going, <laughs> because she was still trapped behind a mask. She it was still, she was still imprisoned by it, and she didn't know how to get out of it. But then what started to happen is every now and again, it would, her real self would show through. And the real self is the feeling self. Yeah, and in her, la her last relationship, you didn't do that. You don't let the real self out. You don't let the feelings out. You just lock it up, pack it down, pack and stack it, and. So now all of a sudden she let some of it out, and then it, I'm still here. It didn't, it didn't scare me off. It didn't, it, it's like a testing. It's like a, I'm going to seep a little bit of this out just to see what happens. Does he run? Does he fight? You know, what happens, right? And I'm and like, oh, that's cool. Hey, yeah. I was like, what you have there? It's like, like wow, what, 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 what I really want. I'm like, hey, that was cool, yeah. man. That's great. Yeah, that, yeah, that's cool. Like, let that shit out, right? But it's, it's, it's a safe space, problem, yeah. right? A safe space when you have a person who's not judging you. Not shaming you, not blaming you for you know the way that they made you feel, or the way that you made them feel when you said the thing, and so. And so I, yeah, so she started to come come alive again. Like she started to feel her feelings that she hadn't felt in 30, 40 years, or I guess thirty five years. We're we're forty two now. Um, I'm forty one. We're forty one. We're forty one. We're forty one now. Is that how old we're forty one? We're we're actually we're, I'm, I'm three days older than her. Uh, so, I, she reminds me a lot of myself when I was her age, three, day, three days ago. <laughs> oh, whippersnapper. <laughs> You'll catch up. <laughs> so, uh, but so, I'm responsible for my relationship. Oh, well, let's tell the thing. Uh, uh, you, you always don't, like, you always don't like the way that I, you always don't like the way that I say this story. So, let's oh, work okay. on it. Let's work on it together. Oh, okay. There's this story, um, because there's, there's, uh, you know, her side of the story, and then there's the truth, right? <laughs> All right, so, you know, she likes to change her side of the story. She likes to change her side of the story to make it whatever, but, you know, but we, but with my side of the story, so it's just, I'm just telling the truth, so. <laughs> um, this was the one where I oh, told you about your purpose. Oh gosh. Okay, so I'll tell this. You tell the story. You can tell this time. I'll let you know. I'll let you know if she she's changing the story. Um, okay, so it started with uh, so this there was a person at at our table and and this person like got triggered with me about something. 
I never shared this part of the story. Okay. I didn't think this was cool. no, no, I, I'm not saying don't do it. I, okay, I, yeah. I, I didn't even realize this was so part of the story. Context. I literally didn't realize this was part of the well, story. We'll talk about that time. That's good. Okay. I'm saying before. I, because we've talked about it and you shared it, this is part of the story. But oh. to me, I'm like, that doesn't mean part of the story. Yeah, Why? and it gets irrelevant. But, but no, no, it is. It is relevant. Yeah. For your side of the story, <laughs> your side of the story is important. Okay, I'm going. Even though it's not the story, but mine. All right, so someone got triggered with me and. I brought that and it hurt, right? So whatever, whatever it was, it was something that I needed to take responsibility for. And so, but I ended up going to Jonathan and I was like, why did he say what this thing was? And he's like, well, that's because he doesn't know the purpose. And I was like, he doesn't know my purpose? Okay, so what What do you mean? What is my, what do you mean? What is my purpose that he didn't know? And I'm like, oh, I'm just like, oh, you want me to tell you your purpose? And I'm all excited, and I'm like, I can't wait to, oh yeah, I'll tell you your purpose. So I told him about her purpose that night. He said, the purpose of your life is to make me happy. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, 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 but, then, but, but I continued speaking after that. I, I probably talked for about another 30 minutes. I don't even minutes. know. There I probably talked for about another 30 minutes after that. The wall went up, and the flames stayed here, and like, I don't know what else. What else. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. So, so she didn't talk to me. So I talked for about thirty minutes, and and then uh, she got yeah, two or three days. So she didn't talk to me for two or three days. I was so mad. I was like, how, like how dare you? I have a great big purpose, and it's not to make you happy. Are you kidding me? I'm not just like the sandwich maker. I'm not just the wife. I have a big purpose. So all of this is limiting belief. Side note: stepping out. Not, this is all limiting belief. Like he said the thing that triggered my like, my deepest fears, my limiting beliefs. Like, what if I'm nothing? What if I'm worthless? What if I am just the sandwich maker? You know? So would you like to hear what what I meant by that? Because I've shared with her what I what I meant so by that. So three days later he said it again and I heard it and I was like, oh. difference between wanting something and being ready to receive it. So I said I said it again. when she finally said, Alright. She had about violet. Oh what? Violet. You maybe you have to maybe you have to do it. You you do it you do it because I, I don't remember exactly that. Okay. Do you want me to say something yeah, first? Yeah, you, you can start and then I'll. Okay. And you'll interject. Yeah. And, okay. So uh, she finally was like, "All right, I don't know if I can do this, but yeah, just I'm, say the thing. I'm, ready. I'm going yeah. to I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna hear you. Like you you've got something that you're trying to share with me, and I can see that I'm blocking it because I'm pissed off. I'm ready to hear it. Like, All right, cool. So I said, the purpose of your life is to make me happy. And for example, like when, you know, Violet, we just got this new um, cat, and she's a hairless sphinx, you might have seen her right now, and she's precious and perfect, and she, there's nothing she can do to ever bother me or trigger me or upset me or anything because I'm using her to be happy. Like her purpose in my life is to make me happy. Remember the question that I said, one of the most important questions, one of the most beneficial questions I've ever asked and I use it all the time. Anybody remember what that question was? What am I going to use it for? And so um, we get to decide. So I'm responsible for my relationship. I get to decide what I'm going to use everyone for. Because we go where we live emotionally. We use our environment to get ourselves there. I already told you what I'm using you all for. I told you that I know something about you, whether you know it or not. And there's nothing you can do to change my mind about it. I know that you love me. So I'm going to use you to feel more and more unconditional love. And there's nothing you can do about it. You can spew venom at me. You can throw phones at me. You can do whatever you got. You can, you can wall off to me. You can pull your hand from me because you said my hand was too sweaty. And I'm still going to like, oh, God, you love this shit. I mean, I'm going to use you to feel more love. So I get to decide what I was telling her. was that I get to decide what... The, the purpose of your life for me is. I don't even get to say. She doesn't get to say. Yeah. And so, like literally, I'm like, the purpose of your life is to make me happy. And because I decided that, that's what I use her for. No matter what she says, no matter what she does. Can you imagine you're really heated up, you're really triggered with this person? She and doesn't have to imagine what she's saying. She gets to experience it. So go ahead. Yeah. I don't know this person, a person, right? So yeah, you're yeah, really yeah. triggered with them. And their response to you is, is like, yay! You know, like, everybody's going to be happy. There's That's literally. You can do about that. I was like, I'm cheering. And, then, and, and then then she's like, really angry. And I'm like, step it up. Like, okay, yeah. I'm going to. And the angrier she gets, the happier I get. Yeah. 
<laughs> it was like a challenge. Like, and it was it was training, right? There was a, there was it was a, we call it sharpening your sword. So it yeah. was a, it was a sword sharpening training. Because she'll pick it up if I'm if I'm still happy, like and she'll get more angry. And but but that's a great thing because uh, if if because it brings more heat, and I, I love the heat coming at me. I actually yeah, love the heat coming at me. Because if any of it burns me, if I'm like, ow, why'd you say that? Ow! That's a really good thing because what that just hit, it, it, the only thing that can get burned is what I'm not. And when I pause right here, so what I love about you is that when I do get close to a button, we'll call it a button, when I do get close to that, he'll, he'll feel it and he'll scan himself and he's like honest about it and he'll drop it and he's like, okay, you found the like, oh, shit, oh shit, that hurt. Oh, I'm going to work now. You know, and then we just work. Yeah, so it's a great gift if she finds something. If she's shooting the flames at me, and then it's like, ow, something burnt. The only thing that can get burnt is what I'm not. I want that to be burnt. So I want that to get out of me. I don't want to have any of that. So, so hell hath no fury like a woman scorned, right? So she's like, poking around, like, she, she can find the, the, because women are very intuitive, and they can find your fear, right? So she's looking for it. Right? So, you know, because the woman's scorned, right? Firing. Hurt people hurt people. So if she's hurting, then she's trying to hurt. But it's not, you know, it's not a problem. It's just because she's hurting. And she's projecting most. Now, there have been times where I fucked up. I just fucked, you know, I just fucked up shit. There have been times. But most of the time, I'm like just literally just being cool. Being Nothing cool. too crazy. You haven't done anything too crazy. Yeah, I'm like super fucked and up. If, and if you did, it would be <laughs> But, uh, the most of the time, all she's doing is carrying the past with her. She's projecting past men on me. And so she's spewing that and all of the pain that she had in the past about these other people. Like, I represent that. I represent all of the pain that she's ever felt because of men. And so she's spewing that at me. And I'm just like, yeah, but wait, here, here, can you get my back? Let me see if there's anything there. No, no, there. Like, I'm, so like, I'm using the spew. There's increasingly less buttons. So I was like, so I don't really have, I can, you know, kind of put my uh, my flame away, right? By our dragon, which Chris, oh, she's with her baby. Yeah, so, because she's feeling fully, and like, it's all coming out of her, like all of the stuff that she's been packing and stacking for her entire lifetime is now all out, and it's just been spewing out, and and like, I'm like, cool, it's done all its work on me, so I, I found myself, I found what I'm not, at, like each little button, like, oh, you burnt one, ow, oh, but thank you, I appreciate that, thank you for hitting that button, and I'm like, cool, and then it goes away, like, more and more of, of the John that I thought that I was, my egoic identity, it dies, so less of me and more of you, God, and what a great gift for her, could, you know, because the masculine energy doesn't really... It doesn't feel as well, as, as deep as the feminine energy. It's not what it's here for. It's, it's here for form. It's here to you know, create structure and, and to, to serve and protect. It, literally, the purpose of a man. The purpose of a man is to serve and protect and support women. That's the purpose of a man. That's literally it, our, our sole purpose is to serve, protect, and support women. And that's when the, how we get fulfilled is by doing that. So the, the, the purpose of women in this relationship is to put the electricity in the light bulb, to, to share her emotions, her energy and emotion, because together we birth babies. We birth physical babies, but in this village is a baby that we birth together. Because it was a vision that we both, we both had. I held the frame for it, the structure for it, but she put the life into it. And so... That's how we work together. And so her role is to support me and supporting her. And that's each and every one of you ladies. For the men, your role is to serve, protect, and support her. Her role is to support you in supporting her. To build you up. Mel is a... Kingmaker. I'm a kingmaker. I told you, when, when we met, I was this little puddle. And I was not... <laughs> A, a homeless her. puddle, <laughs> and she took me into her little one bedroom apartment. I wasn't a king. I was a I was a toad, and she kissed the toad, and that was that felt really great to me because I've never I've never been kissed as a toad. I, I got kissed as a fake prince because I wasn't. I had an ideal self that was a, a prince, like 
this king, somebody who's so great, right? But it was a fake version. It wasn't really it. So then that thing fell off, and I'm laying there as a toad. And then she comes in, and she, and then I don't have anything to give. See, I always thought I was loved for what I do. But I'm like, I don't have, I, I can't do anything, I can't give anything. And she looked at me, and she loved me as a toad. And then she kissed me, and I turned into a prince. She's a king maker. And that's, ladies, that's your role. And you're a queen maker. Um, and I just started dialing this in and really being able to see what is this king maker. And I can see it in my life. And I also see that it's just, it's, it's when I am standing in wholeness and there are no voids and there's nothing he needs to do to make me happy. It's from that place that I'm whole and I just overflow and I don't need to consume my partner. I can lift my partner up. I can enhance my partner. I can see his greatness. Um, support what you're up to, your birth babies together. But it's also my sons. You know, I see my sons as king makers. I see who they are and I'll always... You see yourself as a king maker too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I see them as kings. Thank you. <laughs> I see them as kings and I will always see them as kings and I will not ever use them now that I know this word, right? I can see how the tools, you know. And all the men in our village. And the men in our village and the men at the grocery store and the men that work on the property and all of the men that I will ever experience. I will not need or want anything from them. I'm whole and complete. I'll enhance you. I'll support you. I'll love you. I don't need anything from you. And that's a king maker. And I have no idea what that meant until really just as of recently stepping really into that now. And I'm going to share with everyone how to do the same. Anybody get the value out of any of that? Because seek first the kingdom. Seek first the kingdom and all else will be added to you. And it was scary and it was a hard road and I didn't think I was going to make it most times. I kept taking those steps and I kept seeking the kingdom, seeking the kingdom and going to wholeness, remembering my wholeness. Even when I didn't want to, I wanted him to fix me, I wanted that to change, I wanted this to change. But when I seek first the kingdom, look, everything, everything has been added to me. Love pays the bills. My relationship's incredible. What you see right here is what you get any day of the week. Any time of the day you come over to my house, this is what you see. This is who you see. 